When we talked about numbers last class, we said, well, they're ordinal numbers and cardinal numbers. And the way we define natural numbers, we, until we give them some purpose, it's not clear what they are. So now we're going to see if we can use natural numbers to measure sizes to give us cardinality. We haven't defined cardinality, so we're going to define it. We have an intuition that it's something about how much, how many there are. So the first step to define it is going to be what it means for two sets to have the same cardinality. The definition we're going to use, and this is a, a widely accepted definition, is that if we can find a bijection, this is a one-to-one -one mapping between the two sets. That means every element in the sets maps to exactly one element in the other set. One-to-one -one mapping, that means they have the same cardinality. That seems like a pretty good match to our intuition about what cardinality of sets should mean. Is this enough for us to talk about? There's a set that has seven elements from just this definition. So this says if we already know the cardinality of some set, we can tell any other set whether it has the same cardinality or not. If we want to talk about a set having a size, we need something else. Yeah, what do we need? Like you had a three mm -hmm. set. Good. So you could just say if your your cardinality is the same as my seven set, then you have a cardinality. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. We need some sets whose cardinality we know. We need something that we can say this is a three set. If you can map your set one to one onto this set, your set also has cardinality three. What would be a good idea for what we use for you know, we could arbitrarily make a three set? What would be a natural thing to use for a three set? Good. Define the three set as the natural numbers up to three, not including three. And that is handy because we don't have to do something special to find the four set or the five set or the seven set. We can define them all at once because we have a notation. This is the notation the book uses for the set of all the natural numbers from zero up to not including that number. So now we can talk about the cardinality of any finite set by having a mapping one-to-one -to, -one to one of these special sets that we have defined its cardinality. Two sets have equal cardinality, and we can map them to a particular set to say what its cardinality is. What about infinite sets? Is there going to be any bracket K set that we can map that set to? There isn't. What it means to be infinite is there is no finite number that will match that size. We're not going to ever find a bijection. But this definition that we started with is still seems pretty good. So we're going to not limit the definition to finite sets. We're going to say that the definition is the same. Whether it's finite or infinite, two sets have the same cardinality if there's a bijection. For the finite sets, we have a convenient way to name them based on the natural numbers. For the infinite sets, it's going to get a lot weirder and more complicated, or at least doesn't correspond to some intuition. If we define equality, we can also define less than or equal to. If there's a mapping that is surjective from A to B, well, that means that the size of A is at least the size of B. I said it in the opposite direction here. This is intuitive, right? From our equality definition, if there's a one-to-one -one mapping, if there's a direction where there's a mapping at least in one direction, we know one set is not bigger than the other set. Do we buy these two facts? We have two sets that have the same cardinality. And I've started to use that notation. And remember, that's a bijection. Does that mean that the cardinality of A is less than or equal to B and the cardinality of B is less than or equal to A? If there is a, bi a bijection, is also a surjection. So bijection means there's one to one. Surjection means you're covering this set, but you might not use everything in the other set. So if you have a bijection, you definitely have a surjection in both directions. What about this property? Is this one as obvious as the other one? If you have the 
surjection in both directions, do you have equality? This one is much less obvious. And this one actually took about a decade for people to actually prove this. So, so this one is famous enough. It's got a theorem with, with Cantor was actually the first one to state the theorem, but he didn't prove it. And others proved it. So that one is, seems pretty intuitive that it should be true. Um, it's definitely not obvious. We're not going to get into the proof of that. 